Here's some cool tricks you probably didn't know. The first one is Yemo can actually stun towers. She does this by placing her stun on the tower and just stunning it like you would any other player. You can see here that the red beam actually goes away when I stun the tower for about 0.5 seconds. For our next cool trick, Giannis can actually make the pyro disappear. Well, not really, but he can actually portal it while it's doing its little jutsu thingy, majiggy, and actually make it fall through the portal. Next up, we have Funny Bones Baron. This character not only acts funny, but can look funny too. If you cancel your channel back right before you recall, you can have what we call Big Hat Baron. Similarly, if you cancel just a tiny bit earlier before that, you can have Medium Hat Baron. Hat goes away every single time you channel your back. This is one that more people may know, but if you're against Athena or Horus, those kinds of characters and you're playing Ares, you can actually time your alt to where you can pull them back in by the time their channel alt is down. Next up, we actually have a pretty cool trick with Uller. So if you're disarmed and you end up switching stances, you actually remove the disarm from Uller and you can pretty much play the game again. This one's not too game breaking, but what I found pretty cool is that you can phantom shell and hide in player made objects such as on her pillar and actually not take damage from those characters. Now it depends how big your hitbox is and what character you are, but a character like Issa might be hard to hit. So this one's actually a trick I mentioned in my Emoji God video, but I thought it also relevant to mention it here too. So Yemo actually reveals invis targets called her ult. Another cool trick with her is that you can actually hoop out of Odin Cage if you place the hoop directly on the ring of the cage. Here's a nice hidden little interaction, but Alquang actually cannot execute Yorm because of Yorm passive. So Yorm is completely safe from Alquang execute. Another neat hidden interaction is Maui can actually teleport Horus out of Horus's initial ulting location. This isn't really proved too useful, but it can be in the heat of a battle if Horus is getting damaged and you actually teleport him out of the damage. Her can Blink pull somebody and gain more distance on the pull. Now to pull this off, you need to have Blink on Quick or Instacast and do a 180 Blink right before the tip of your pull hits the target. Up next, we have a cool interaction with Danza and Izanami. So Danza can actually ult and the ult will follow Izanami while she's invis and actually just, you know, stun her and take her out of invis. So this is actually a pretty cool trick if you're ever in this matchup. Similar to the Ares trick mentioned earlier on in the video, this one's also a pretty neat interaction. If you alt Wukong as he goes into his cloud, and if he jumps out too early, you can actually pull him out of his ult midair. And it's because he's no longer CC immune as he's jumping out of his ult. He's only CC immune when he's in his ult. Neethal has a lot of really weird lock-on issues, especially when it comes to banished characters, but here are three that I thought were pretty neat. So the first is that Morgan's stealth decoy will actually eat the arrow for Morgan if she goes invis after Neath shoots the arrow at her. The next is Yuhan can simply jump the alt with his three and the arrow just disappears like it was never there in the first place. The last one I have for this weird interaction is that Chernobyl can actually dash into the wall after the alt has been fired and similar to Yuhan, the arrow will just simply disappear. I believe there are some more interactions like this with Neath, especially when it comes to banished characters, self-banished characters, but these were the three that I thought were the most interesting. Alright, next up we have a cool little interaction with Nox. So, Nox can actually dash into Apollo while he's ulting, and it's not just Apollo by the way, she can do this with other characters too, but even when her dash expires, she actually still stays in Apollo's ult as long as Apollo's still in the air, so she will not exit Apollo until he lands back down on the ground. I found this to be a pretty cool interaction. Again, you can do this with other characters too. I believe Thanatos is another one, and same with a few others. Okay, so here are a couple cool interactions with Danza. The first is, and you guys might know this because I feel like this is a little bit more widely known, but Danza is actually immune to towers. Well, not really immune to towers, but towers don't target him when he's in his three form. So if you go into your three and then you go into a leaf, the tower actually can't target you and doesn't target you at all. In fact, if you time this perfectly right, you can immune a tower shot with it as well. The next cool little tip with Danza is that he can actually take reduced damage to things like gold fairies, minions, and all that kind of stuff because his three makes him take 20% reduced damage to auto attacks and a gold fairy hitting you, even FG or the Titan is considered an auto attack. So if you're in your three, you're actually taking 20% reduced damage from those neutral objectives. And this actually leads me to this next cool trick that surprisingly a lot of people don't know, but Jing one reduces the auto attack damage of somebody hits with it by 50%. Now, everybody knows about that one, but what's cool is that if he hits the Titan with it, if he hits the FG with it, if he hits the Gold Fury with it, or even just minions with it, they all do 50% reduced damage. So it's actually really, really good for tanking things like Gold Fury, FG, even Titan at any stage in the game. 
This is actually a really neat interaction with Kepri. So Kepri ult on its initial hit cleanses your allies out of any CC. Think of it like a Geb shield, how that cleanses when you first give your ally the shield. Well, it turns out you can use this cool mechanic on Al Kuang Execute. Since his execute acts as a stun first, then a banish into an execute, you can actually cleanse the stun portion of Ao's execute with your ult, giving Kepri ult another useful way in saving your ally. I made a mini video about this one a while back, but I'm gonna add it here because I do believe that this is a hidden feature that not many people know about. But the runic bomb is this bomb that you get from killing the pyromancer in conquest. Well, it turns out that in addition to doing a ton of damage to structures, it also slows the structure's attack speeds by 35% for about 10 seconds. What's even more interesting about this effect is that the effect actually stacks with Emp's armor to give about a 65% reduction of attack speed to the structure being affected. Alright, so that was the last cool trick I had in this video. I'm sure there are more of them out there, but if there's something that you guys know of that I didn't mention, feel free to leave a comment about it below. Until next time everyone, see ya!